Good morning, everyone. Uh, all of you who are here in the sanctuary and uh, those who are on Zoom and on Facebook Live, uh, welcome to our services uh, today. And uh, we're going to move forward. Those who are in the sanctuary, if you haven't already done so, uh, please pick up a bulletin uh, to, to my right. Uh, we have an issue this morning with the monitors, and so we'll use the bulletins. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we'll take a look at what the announcements that we have this week. Uh, today, we'll remind everyone that we do have uh, Sunday school both in person and online, and uh, hopefully we get the children here at 1130. Uh, we still need technical assistance, someone to come up and be here early in the morning uh, just to run the system like what Heidi does. Uh, she will be out on the 23rd of May, and it's getting pretty desperate because we haven't got anybody to say they will do it. Yeah. So please, please, please. Uh, we're still accepting donations for the lunch program that we're running for the homeless. Uh, we'll, we have three Sundays now that we're dealing with, so Lori and Chris and the family are, are in charge of that, but we do need money to keep that going and buying the food. So if you are able to, uh, to donate, uh, please do so. And if you're doing it by check, just put in the, uh, in the memo line luncheon uh, so that we will know that it's what it's for. Today is communion Sunday. So uh, if you are at home, just encourage you, the email did go out uh, asking you to have your host ready to do communion. So we would ask you to have that ready when that time comes in the service. Uh, that's the announcements that we have for this week. I uh, encourage you to read the silent meditation and prepare your hearts for service as uh, Eric uh, plays the prelude. <laughs>
Our opening hymn is, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, verses 1 and 4, uh, number 4, 2 in our hymns. <laughs> I call to worship. God is in our midst, forming us to be God's own people. We need not fear. Come to the Lord who will surround you with God's own righteousness. be seated. Our opening prayer, we pray together. We gather this day, O oh Lord, as people who seek your guiding love. Open our hearts and make us ready to stand firm in the faith. Create a new people in this place so that your love may surround all who enter here. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Heidi will lead us in our children's message. Good morning, everyone. I apologize for all of the technological issues going on this morning. Um, but I'm so happy to be here with all of you today. So our children's message today comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. And it focuses mainly on, we love because God first loved us. And so I have with me here today a set of dominoes. And I, I want to set them, I'm going to set them here. I'm sorry, people on the screen can't necessarily see them, but when you set up dominoes and they, um, you know, what happens when you set up dominoes and you hit them with one domino? They all knock over. So in this situation, this is like God's love with us. It's because God's love is that first domino that sparks the love in us, that we can then go out and spark love in one another. And so I know it's sorry that it can't be seen on the screen, but it does make a cool sound that the dominoes all hit one another because God sparks this love in all of us. Um, 
What I also recommend people looking at as a similar demonstration of this is Rube Goldberg machines are really cool to look at when you have these intricate machines of set up things that it takes like one domino or one um, thing going off that sets off this huge machine of balls and cars and all sorts of things that go one after another to let a huge thing happen. And that's what happens with God's love. It not only impact us on an individual level, but it creates it so that we go out into the world loving other people to do impossible things so that we can do things that we could never imagine doing on our own. We could never possibly do just by being one domino. But because of God's love igniting us, we have a whole bunch of dominoes collected together to do something impossible. And so I invite you now to pray with me. Dear God, thank you for loving us and starting the chain reaction of love. Show us how to keep your love going until every person knows you love and care about them. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. Very, very timely a message. Uh, we now come to uh, the point in our services for our joys and concerns. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank Susan and all who participated uh, last uh, week in the service for her message and uh, all the others that were responsible for what uh, occurred in church. I had a wonderful week. Uh, I did take a couple of days off and Cynthia and I went out of town and just enjoyed uh, having, well, we have time with each other at home, but it's a difference between home and being somewhere else, as some of you probably know. So we uh, enjoyed our time away, and um, I, I got time to just sit quietly and get my spirits back in order. I realized that uh, Easter season in Lent takes a lot out of our clergy. And most of them take time off immediately after Easter. Uh, but I decided that I'd like to wait for my birthday and had wonderful birthday. And thank you for all the cards that were sent, uh, all the gift cards and everything else that, that I received. Uh, it was just a joy when you get as old as I am, people still want to wish you happy birthday. So uh, thank you for that. Cynthia is doing quite well. She had a, a uh, week of, uh, didn't have any doctor's appointments, but I can tell the difference in her demeanor uh, this past week versus what it has been in the weeks past. And uh, we happened to attend a homecoming celebration of one of our close friends uh, yesterday. And they hadn't seen, most of them hadn't seen her for almost a couple of years. They were commenting on how well she looks. Now, I see her every day. I can see the difference. Uh, she's on this big kick now that uh, I don't know how many pounds she plans on losing, but you can actually see it. it's like three to four pounds a week. And she's not doing anything special. She's just watching what she eats, which is she loves to cut the bread out. And that that has solved a lot of her problems. So we're so grateful and continue the prayers for her. She gets her second shot. Tuesday, and uh, hopefully, I was telling Heidi, hopefully by Memorial weekend, uh, she'll be able to come to church uh, by getting that uh, second shot. She has not had a problem with the shot so far being being uh, ill, so that, that's been wonderful. Um, we did celebrate uh, uh, Joy, uh, really, one of our dear friends' homecoming uh, yesterday. Um, we, um, I have a lot to say about that later, but she was a wonderful uh, lady. Her, her death was unexpected uh, at the time, so I'll, I'll talk about that uh, later on. Um, I didn't see any joys that came in. Is, is there anything in the, in the chat or Facebook? Um, Danielle Lee said, uh, joy that Raynard's son Bryce graduated college yesterday at cum laude. So that joy came in through Facebook. Okay. 
So let's move to our uh, concerns. Uh, we want to continue to keep this. Uh, Pam Reed's uh, grandson uh, has a mask and is, uh, I'm repeating this for the people that are online, uh, has a mask uh, in his uh, chest, pretty good size, and biopsy has been done and uh, resorts are expected next week. Uh, a grandson's 23, and uh, we want to pr have prayers from everybody for uh, a, a negative resort and what, what they can do about the uh, masses in his chest. So we want to have prayers for that uh, situation. We also want to continue to pray for, uh, for Greg. Uh, he had his stem cells put in. Susan reported to the clergy last Thursday that the radiation chemotherapy has made him quite sick. So he's trying to get through all of this. So we want to continue to pray for him. We want to pray for Jimmy as well. He's starting to get uh, whatever's going to happen with the surgery for his back sometime in the, in the near future. So we want to continue to uh, pray for him. He's in a lot of pain most days. And so continue to hold him in prayer uh, as well as um, Bob Perry. Uh, I see Dick is, he's been here since we opened back up and he's doing, uh, doing, fa doing fairly well, he tells me. So uh, when you get to be our age, uh, fairly well as you're standing up, right? <laughs> so we're, we're grateful for that. We also want to continue to pray for others that we're aware of who are dealing with cancer situations. Uh, I know Robert DeCosto is one and uh, Jan Peterson has talked about uh, Nancy and dealing with her cancer. Danielle gave us a, a Kendra Smiley, uh, one of her co-workers who's also dealing with uh, breast cancer. So uh, we want to pray for those individuals that continue to lift them up. Uh, continue to pray for Lori's mother as she deals with her issues. And uh, your blessings upon my brother when Warren Cole as he uh, goes on with life without his, his soulmate. Any other concerns? Yes, Charlene. Uh, I asked for prayers for uh, Humphrey, and she's traveling in Liberia. So mm -hmm. pray for her safety and safety return. Yeah. And I pray for um, a baby, well, a toddler, his name is Jackson um, Schwartz, who has um, brain lesions and um, Complications and I just asked for prayers for him as well. Thank you. He's the son of a child that I knew in school. It's mm -hmm. a boy that did it well. He's a man now, but he's a girl that I knew. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, Lori. Yeah, thank you for that. Lori sh uh, shared uh, praying for the technology here at the church if we can get some of the issues resolved. Oh, that's, that's occurring here in the uh, sanctuary. We have a few prayer concerns coming in on Facebook, one from Beverly Peterson, that her nephew will be having surgery on Tuesday for his lung cancer. They'll mm -hmm. be removing part of his lung and hopefully they'll get all of the cancer. And Danielle, um, one of the uh, Indian reservation sites that she supports experienced multiple shootings last night mm -hmm. at the Oneida Indian community. So yeah. prayers for them, please. Yeah. We want to continue to pray for the people in India and what they are going through. It's a very, very dire situation. Uh, remember our, our bishop, Bishop Devadai, is from India. So I know he's feeling the effects of what's happening there and things are getting worse uh, before they get better. So we want to lift those people up as well. And we also want to lift up um, our Asian Americans. Uh, last Sunday, I was privileged to hear one of our Korean pastors and uh, she shared that she was so bothered by what's happening with the Asian community, she was afraid to go out, do any shopping, uh, just to go to a, her church. And I was pleased that there were people in that congregation who stepped up and did a shopping for her. Uh, many offered to be a bodyguard if she had to go out and so forth. So uh, 
just a terrible situation is happening with our Asian brothers and sisters. And we don't realize the impact of the things that, that's happening with that, uh, with those people here in the United States and around the world. It's not just happening here, it's happening all around the world. So we wanna continue to keep them in prayer and reach out. If you have Asian friends, just reach out to them. Let them know that you love them, you care about them, uh, you know, going forward. Let us uh, buy our hearts and minds and go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we are uh, so grateful and understanding and we know that you give us blessings that we receive gladly. We look forward to the many blessings to come as it, as it pertains to the congregation here at Memorial and all the families who come here, all the families who worship with us on social media, through fucking YouTube and TV, help us to understand the importance of just holding each other together. We lift up and pray for those prayer concerns that were raised to you this morning. All the names, all the healing that is needed from you with your healing touch in the name of your son, Jesus the Christ. Give us the strength and the courage to carry on and to uphold each other as we move forward in this, in this world and in this life. We do continue to pray for our DS, Reverend Dr. David Calhoun and his family. He has requested prayers for his daughters, uh, one who has tested positive for COVID, but yet she's still dealing with the, the, uh, the long-term effects and four young children she's trying to care for at the same time. But then he has daughters who uh, on their way to college and who are taking the lead and in, in getting what's necessary to care for. We do continue to pray for Bishop Belvedere and his family and his extended family uh, cabinet uh, that uh, is giving us prayers uh, for almost three weeks now uh, to share with our congregations and with our, our people that are in our environment. We thank you for his leadership. Continue to pray for the United Methodist Church in general. As next year things will come together and decisions will be made and we certainly hope that those decisions will help us and guide us in a way forward in what we have to deal with here in the United Methodist Church worldwide. We do continue to pray for our city, state, and national leaders that you will surround them with love and joy and help them to do the right thing when it comes to helping the people in the environment that they are responsible for. Continue to guide us with wisdom and help us to be what you have called Memorial to be for the community at large. May we continue to give with the programs that we have here at the church and reach out to others in the best way that we can. Thank you for joy, for hope, for peace. And thank you for surrounding all the families here, all the families that worship with us on social media with love, with joy, and peace. In your son's precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, as you are able, I will ask you to stand for the affirmation of faith, which comes to us from my worship and song, number 79. Together, we belong to God, eternal and infinite, creator of all things and all that is to come. We follow Christ who comes to us from God and reveals God to us, he heals people and transforms lives. He's called us to join in his ministry. He was crucified, died, was raised by God, and reigns over all creation. And he bids us to die to with him in the service of the healing of the world. We live by the Spirit together with the communion of saints, as members of the body of Christ, God's holy universal church. We are confident in the forgiveness of sin, the power of resurrection, and the reality of eternal life. In all things is our desire for our Christ. The grace of the Holy Spirit 
for God's glory. Amen. You may be seated. Our prayer of illumination comes from our worship in song number 71. Eternal God, in the reading of the scripture, may your word be heard in the meditations of our hearts. May your word be known and in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. Our scripture this morning is the gospel witness, and I'm really not going to require you to stand unless you want to. It's John chapter 15, verses 1 to 17. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it would be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the father will give you. This is my command, love each other. And this is the word of our Lord. Thank you, you may be seated. So this morning, the message that we have to share with you is entitled, We Are the Branches. It is fascinating to me that in our Southern Protestant religious cultures, such a strong emphasis is placed upon literary interpretation. Interestingly, Jesus so often did not speak literally, but figuratively. He spoke in allegories and images. He painted word pictures instead of literally coming out and saying what he meant. He so often would tell a story and let people draw their own conclusion. Indeed, these hidden messages of Jesus frequently frustrated his disciples. They wished that he would speak literally and not be quite so subtle about whatever it was he was trying to tell them. This morning, we take a look at one of the I am sayings of Jesus. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Not now, even the most ardent fundamentalist has to agree that when Jesus spoke those words, he was not speaking literally. Obviously, if we are, in, if we are to understand what Jesus was getting at here, we must look beyond the surface and do some exploring. We have to go beyond the actual words and discover Jesus's meaning. When Jesus spoke about vineyards, the people of Judea knew what he was talking about. It was an industry that had been carefully cultivated throughout the country for centuries. It was crucial because it was a cash crop as opposed to grain, which was raised purely for consumption. In early America, the essential crop was corn, but the cash crop was tobacco. It was therefore vital to the economy of our land. Quite frankly, I must admit that I know very little about the particulars of the vine industry. 
in preparation for this sermon, I did some reading in this area and was really quite fascinating. The vines of a very rugged crop in a way, in, in another sense, it is a very delicate fruit and requires being treated with kids' gloves. A young vine is not permitted to bear fruit for the first three years. It is therefore drastically pruned in December and January to preserve its energy. The particular branches that do not bear fruit are cut out to further conserve the energy of the plant. If this constant cutting back was not done, the result would be a crop that was not up to full potential. So when Jesus spoke about vineyards, certainly the people could, could identify with, with the metaphor that he was using. Even as a person in Iowa could know about corn or in Mississippi about cotton, it didn't make any difference whether or not you were on, in that business. You had grown up around enough of it that you would still be familiar with it. And growing up in Alabama and Tennessee, uh, most of where we live was soybeans and uh, soybeans and, and cotton. Those are the big, big crops around where we grew up. And even though we did not farm, um, you knew that uh, that's what they were using for whatever the farmers needed. There's something else that these listeners would most certainly know. The vineyard was a symbol of the nation. In America, we might think of amber waves of grain, but in Judea, they thought of their nation as a vineyard. It was a kind of natural identity. Over and over again in the Old Testament, Israel is pictured as divine or the vineyard of God. Isaiah the prophet pictured Israel as the vineyard of God. He said, and I quote, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, end of quote. In Jeremiah, we read God's referring to his chosen people in this way, I planted you as a choice vine. Hosea spoke a word of judgment when he said, Israel has become an empty vine. In the Psalms, we read that God compares Israel to a vine that came out of Egypt. Just, Jehoshaphat, the Roman historian, informs us that over the temple in Jerusalem was carved an exquisite gold leaf grapevine. It stood as a symbol of natural unity. Israel itself was in the eyes of the people, the true vine, whose roots ran all the way back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In Jesus' analogy, he liked himself to a vine. While the fruit bearing branches here are the disciples, God the farmer is depicted as the one who cultivates the vineyard. He waters and tends the soil so that the vine is properly nourished. He takes pride in the crop. But this means that he also prunes the vines and removes the dead wood. The grapes hang on to the branches. So what is Jesus saying here? It's quite clear. The disciples should receive their strength from Jesus. He is the true vine. If they break away from him, they will be like unproductive branches and die and bear no fruit. They then will have to be pruned out. So what can we make of this analogy in terms of our daily life? What does it mean to be God's vineyard? First, I think that it raises a question that we must all answer. Are we bearing fruit for the kingdom of God? How can you tell a pear tree by the fruit that it bears? How can you tell an apple tree by the fruit that it bears? How can you tell a Christian by the fruit that he or she bears? It is just as simple as that. The fruits of the vine are not church attendance or biblical knowledge or your individual stewardship. Even though all of these things are important, the true fruit of, fruit of the vine is a loving and compassionate person. It all comes down to this. How do you treat other people? That is simple and as direct as I can put it. The issue is not how much knowledge you have or even necessarily how sincere you are. The issue is how do you treat people? If you are in Christ, people will be able to see the fruits of your life in terms of our compassion and love and attitude. The saying, 
says to us that there is such a thing as an unproductive life. In Jesus' words, the former God is depicted as pruning out bad branches. We don't like to wrestle with that concept because it implies that God cuts some people off. There is an element of judgment in it that we would just as soon not deal with. There are those who are quick to point out that Jesus was here specifically referring to the Jews. That is true, but we miss the point if we do not understand that the law of nature also applies to Christians. Dead branches are not only non-productive, they pull the energy away from the vine and keep it from bearing new branches. We like to think that there are various degrees of allowances, but the truth is that in God's vineyard, there are only two kinds of branches, those that bring forth fruit and those that do not. The former are cultivated, the latter are pruned. God blesses the lives of those persons who are productive for the kingdom. We must cultivate a meaningful relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus said, you must abide in me and my words in you. He's talking here about a relationship. As the fruit receives the nourishment from the vine, so too do we turn to Christ for our daily nourishment and growth. How tragic it is that so many today see their strength as being financially secure or peer respect or their own creative ingenuity or a host of other things. These things may feed us for a day or even for a season, but there comes a time when they will not bring the deep nourishment that we seek. For that, we need God. As I mentioned earlier in the service, uh, we were privileged to be able to attend the homecoming of one of our uh, dear friends, uh, Barbara Cole. Uh, Barbara Cole was a professional chef in her lifetime. Uh, I think she ended up last uh, several years working for the state. Um, but uh, the last uh, <clears throat> several years that we have known her, she had uh, lupus, I think it was, which attacks your immune system. So from time to time, um, she was in a lot of pain, and but you would never know it because when you would call Barbara and uh, trying to check and find out how she was doing, it wasn't long in the conversation before the conversation was turned to you. And she wasn't about talking about herself, but wanted to find out how you were doing. And um, uh, do you want to come over for a meal or what she could do for you? Um, that's just for me is a, an example, and I was I was uh, so pleased uh, yesterday that uh, many when we had time for a witness, uh, there were so many that stood up and talked about uh, what this lady had meant in in their lives. Uh, I think she's the same age as I was when she passed away, and it was untimely death. It was not expected, even though she had illness and so forth. But to hear the, uh, the uh, nephews and the uh, nieces and her, her children talk about what she meant in their lives, and then all of the friends that she had encountered over the years just to stand up and talk about uh, what she had done for people. And I think and believe that uh, whenever our time uh, comes, we need to take a look at, not be, when that time comes, but before then, just kind of take a an inventory of what, where you think you are in your life. What do you think that you're doing for people that you can reach out to? And um, just be the example that people can stand up when your time comes and says, you know, she was a good person. One of her, her the lady could cook anything. Uh, you give her whatever it was you wanted and she would figure out the recipe to make sure that that, that happens. And so uh, through our lives, we need to try and do the same as what this lady represented to so many people in her life. And Jesus said, I am the true vine. As the Father has loved me, so I love you. And what happens when we abide in him and he abides in us? Our joy will be made full. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people said, Amen. Our offertory prayer comes from the worship and song number 99. Great music and little birds remind us of your majesty. Huge sums of money and a widow's coin are both honored when given to tell of your love, your justice, and your mercy. Receive these offerings as signs that we remember that you are greater than our music or our money, for you are the root of it all. Most of all, we marvel that you love us. We are saying thank you, God, as we present this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace, and may the peace of God, which shines brightly and vanquishes darkness, always be with you. Go knowing that God is your rock and your refuge. You are not alone. God is always with you. Amen. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. I looked over Jordan. What did I see coming for to carry me up? A band of angels coming after me, coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot. Coming for to carry me home. If you get there before I do. to be seated before our post loop.